Welcome back to the Brutal Hop YouTube channel, where we're working through following the call, living the Sermon on the Mount together. This week we're on chapter 30. We're starting to read through um, the Lord's Prayer line by line, which I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. um, because it is such an important uh, prayer that Jesus taught us. So Matthew 6, 9, Our Father in Heaven. So this chapter is called Our Father, and it's really focused on what does it mean for us to mm -hmm. call God Father. Um, maybe we start, start by talking about what does the word Father bring to mind for each of us? Yeah, that's exactly what I thought when I was reading this chapter, because like for me, when I think of my father, and I'm sure I'm not unique in this, it's just somebody that I kind of see as doing no wrong a role model for me and also somebody that I would just the worst thing that I could possibly do is let down my dad or my father so that's like the first kind of imagery and it's kind of emblematic to me of why it's so important to say our father when addressing God because that's that's a very bold move as is pointed out in this chapter and means so many things but most of all just that loyalty loyalty um trust yeah uh you know your father has your back um mm -hmm. when you experience hard times also um i think you referred to this a sense of maybe fear is the wrong word but certainly a sense of not wanting to displease yes. mm -hmm. um your father um and yeah i think that connection of you know i mean Jesus also compares himself to, to a mother hen. So I think, you mm -hmm. know, yes, the fatherhood is important, but it, it's, it also includes the, the mother um, instinct. Um, so, yeah, so N.T. NT Wright talks about um, the word father concentrates our attention on the doubly revolutionary message and miss, mission of Jesus. We need to learn what it means to call God Father, and we mustn't be surprised when we find ourselves startled by what it means. So we shouldn't just glibly say um, our Father or, mm -hmm. or call God Father in a way that doesn't acknowledge um, what that claim means. Um, it, it means that we're going to obey. It means that we're going to trust and to follow yeah. no matter where we might be led. And mm -hmm. it might be um, to into difficult circumstances because Jesus himself um, had to go through tremendous um, difficulties. Yeah, and just to add to that shortly is, is also to obey and to be able to take correction. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, that's kind of how I see at least the initial relationship of that's built between a father and a child. Mm -hmm. It's one of discipline. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's also like embodied in, in this passage here, yeah. I mean, speaking as someone with five children myself, I mean, that's the first thing you need to establish, right? Yeah. Is, is the authority um, that we are not on the same level. Um, I am your father, you are my child. That means you will do what I say um, mm -hmm. and you will not question that. Even if it doesn't make sense. Even if it doesn't make <laughs> sense to you at that time. <laughs> okay, good qualifier. <laughs> But there's other aspects to it. Yes. Um, trust. Um, he treats us, Hannah Whithall Smith writes, he treats us as sons and all he asks in return is that we shall treat him as a father whom we can trust without anxiety. Hmm. We must take the son's place of dependence and trust. Um, how many times in each of our lives have we had to depend on, you know, our biological father mm -hmm. um, and when he's in, you know, and trust that he's going to be in control. Yeah. And even further than that, I mean, just building on that thought, how as the father, he would not want us to shoulder the burden, the burden of his duties and, and, you know, the need of the world that he is carrying. And I think this also just puts into context some of those difficult social questions that we often struggle and grapple with. Like, how can we address global poverty and hunger to, to also... And in that moment when you're praying to realize that actually God has that in his hands and we're not the only ones concerning ourselves with the need of the world. We I mean, don't have to take the whole weight of the world. Yeah, I mean, obviously it doesn't like, uh, you know, we should be concerned and all that, but I just we should think do it's our important. Part. Yeah, 
to lay that burden and understand that God sees it all. So well, in a similar way that we care for our biological brothers and sisters, we know that ultimately our parents, you know, as we're growing up, we know that ultimately our parents are responsible for them and we trust that they will um, do well by them. Right. Which leads us then to um, something I hadn't really thought that much of, but when we say um, our father, that means that we have brothers and sisters, right? Yes. Who are not our biological brothers and sisters right. and who we need to esteem as brothers and sisters. Um, Dom Helder Camara writes, if he is ours, then we are all brothers and sisters. Um, even people we don't know. Yeah. And we have to cultivate that ability to look at people, even people, especially people we don't like. Yeah. Or who may be our enemies or may think of our as our enemies as children of the same father yep and that you know if you're part of this a part of being human is having these brothers and sisters mm -hmm. so. so that's a um there's a lot in just this one statement yeah. um our father yeah uh, and then one of the authors also t kind of touches on the second part of that phrase our father who is in heaven mm -hmm. And what that means to be, you know, that's also reminding ourselves of the omnipotence of and all powerfulness of God in heaven, mm -hmm. which we discussed. But I thought that was important to add. Yeah, that's that's what we will concern ourselves next week mm -hmm. um, as we proceed line by line through the Lord's Prayer. Uh, looking forward to doing that with you. We'll see you next week.